All right, guys, Chelsea Holmeyer here, and we are going to go over some OptiGlaze. Quick video. We're going to go how you can go from this plain 3D print to something really pretty um, as a temporary or your final restoration. We'll go over my likes and dislikes. You can do something very beautiful, or you can do something that matches the surrounding teeth. This one actually matched the patient's surrounding teeth perfectly. I like to use the OptiGlaze kit. Um, and then I did order my brushes on Amazon. I did not like the brushes that came with it. So um, those are the ones that I used. didn't spend too much money on, but don't get the cheapest of the cheap. So let's go over how we can get to this. All right. So this is just some teeth we have printed. Um, we're going to make an Essex retainer with this. Uh, this patient has gotten three implants right here. We are going to do a zirconia bridge, but we're going to make these teeth at least really pretty. So he has something to uh, look good in the meantime. Also, I like any excuse to practice my stain and glaze skills. So, first thing I always do is a little bit of olive in the emblazers. You know, when I used to do this, it would take me, God, hours because I felt like I didn't like it and I would stop and start again and redo it or print another one but once you get the hang of it and you've done it a bunch of times I probably take like I don't know 15 minutes or so maybe 20 because even just that little bit I feel like that little teeny bit of separation makes the difference And use my dry one. It's a little too heavy, and that's okay. Use my dry brush, and I just want that little teensy bit in between those teeth. And it is mounted on here with some old wax because when are we ever going to use lab wax again? Don't want it too thick or too thin. Just enough to like separate the teeth a tad. Then... I'm gonna move to some blue on the inside the edges. And this is where I use my thinnest brush. I do blue on the incisal edges. If you want to be really fancy, um, I like to do gray on the incisal edges, but then blue on the vertical embrasure areas. Um, but you know, everyone's different. Do what you like. Do what works for you. you no know, such thing as perfection, only progress. So then, after I've let that sit for a minute, sometimes I'll just take and kind of sweep down. I want to, I want that to be more of like a essence of blue, not, oh my god, why is there blue on the teeth? I want to trick the eyes into thinking that it is actually some translucency. So, a bit of that. That's a little heavy right there and right there. Glaze for about a year and a half now. Um, it has things I like and things I don't like. Um, things I don't like about it. It does chip away a little bit over time, especially if you put in really uneven coats where it's thin and thick in some places. Um, I'm discovering my patients that are heavy tea and coffee drinkers. The acidity in it can, I think, can actually break it down a little bit. I had one patient who was a uh, very heavy tea and coffee drinker. He also um, smoked Mary Jane a lot. Um, with 
his partial in, so his did get discolored, but the good thing about the partial is we can literally just smooth it up and then do a candy coat on it. So just some olive in the embrasures, blue on the incisal edges, and then we're gonna do pink orange. That is gonna go for the body two thirds. We're gonna stay away from the incisal third. And you wouldn't think pink orange would make that big of a difference. I would have never thought to like put those two, put that in there, but I saw it, tried it, and it works really well. margins underneath here I definitely wouldn't be this sloppy for lack of better terms but because I know that that's wax underneath there fine I'll do the same thing again where we go get anything that got into the embrasures take out anything in the embrasures test your curing light and make sure that your curing light goes to the right wavelength because that's super important. It has to get to 405 nanometers I believe. Um, so just make sure your uh, lights are good because when they get older they can die out and you don't know it. You can start getting patients with sensitivity after filling but also your materials might not be set all the way and that's dangerous for our patients if our materials are not we're not using our materials like we're supposed to. I'm going to do a little bit of white for an incisal halo. The pigments do um, separate, so make sure you mix your glaze really well. And for an incisal halo, get anything off this brush. I like a flat brush because I like to go just along the incisal edges and paint it. bit on the canines because you do still get an incisal halo on the canines. I can see just that little bit of incisal halo and then once I put the final glaze on I will go in and make these embrasures just a little bit sharper. I think that makes it look a lot nicer in my opinion. like A plus, B plus, and C plus that they make. Um, for this patient, I don't need to, but just remember, mix your um, chroma down shades with white, not clear. I have been mixing mine with clear, and then um, I finally found something online that said mix it with white, not clear. But we're just doing some clear now to do a final glaze. So we'll take our nice, nice paintbrush. even strokes and we'll do the same thing once we're done we will make sure there's nothing left in the embrasures before we give it its final cure 
and don't forget the tongue side because we want it to be nice and smooth to the tongue too. Alright, and there she is. We'll give it a cure and it's done. Love it. And there we have our final project. It's just some temporaries for the patient, but there are so many possibilities with OptiGlaze. There's a denture that we did and a bridge that we did. So the possibilities are really endless. Make sure you follow me on all the socials and YouTube, and I'll just keep putting out free stuff out there about digital dentistry and for my fellow assistants. Thanks.